this evening, 199. It's good to see you in God's house. We welcome you in the Saviour's precious name. And we're going to stand as we open our service this evening. God loved the world of sinners lost and ruined by the fall. Salvation full at highest cost he offers free to all. Oh, it was love, it was wondrous love. The love of God to me brought my Saviour from above to die on Calvary. Let's stand. Let's really lift our hearts as we sing this opening hymn. Amen. Let's all stand to sing and let's sing it with all of our heart now. God loved the world of sinners lost. Let us all bow in prayer and let's seek the Lord as we come into his presence this evening. Our loving Father in heaven, again we come before thee in this gospel service. We thank thee, Lord, for another opportunity where thy word will go forth. We pray, Lord, tonight again for thy presence. We thank thee that where two or three are gathered together in thy name, there thou art in the midst. 
and not to bless. And we pray, Lord, for thy blessing upon this meeting tonight. We thank thee for your presence with us today already. Thank thee for the word of God that has gone forth, not only here, but right across our province and our nation. And we pray, Lord, again this evening, as men stand and open the Bible and read it and preach it, Lord, that there might be signs following the preaching of thy word. We thank thee, Lord, that it's through the foolishness of preaching that men and women are saved. And, O oh God, we pray tonight, as the gospel goes forth, that you'd be pleased to bless thy word. And, Lord, we know that you will, for thy word shall not return unto thee void. We thank thee for the cross, the wonderful message of salvation that we have to declare that Christ Jesus came into the world to seek and to save that which was lost. O oh God, this is the message that this lost world needs to hear. And we praise thee, Lord, that you've given us this message. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And, O oh God, we thank thee that at this time we can open up thy truth and declare the unsearchable riches of Christ. Lord, bless thy word tonight to every heart, both saint and sinner alike. We do thank thee, Lord. Praise thee for everyone that's in the meeting tonight. We pray, Lord, that you would bless them, that you would speak to all of our hearts. Remember those who are not with us tonight for various reasons. We commit our young people especially to thee, Lord, as they would travel home from the weekend. Keep them safe. Give them journeying mercies. Oh God, we just pray uh, this night that you would receive our thanks for all thy love and mercies to us. Bless us now. Pray to bless our sister Joanna as she sings. We thank thee, Lord, for the gift that you've given to her. And oh God, we pray tonight that even through the messages and song that hearts will be touched for us in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. We are delighted to have our sister Joanna with us. No stranger to any of us. We're going to ask Joanna to come and she's going to bring us a couple of messages and so. Thank you.
hearts and all my pride Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast Save it If you have your Bible with you this evening, please turn, first of all, to Numbers chapter 20 in the Old Testament, Numbers chapter 20. And then once you find Numbers chapter 20, turn to 2 Timothy and the chapter 4. We'll read a few verses at the end of Numbers chapter 20, first of all, and then we'll read a couple of verses, a few verses from 2 Timothy chapter chapter 4. We commence our reading at Numbers chapter 20 in the verse 23 of this chapter. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Darnan in Mount Hor by the coast of the land of Edom, saying, Aaron shall be gathered unto his people, for he shall not enter into the land which I have given unto the children of Israel, because he rebelled against me my word at the water of Marabah. Take Aaron and Eliezer his son, and bring them up unto Mount Hor, and strip Aaron of his garments, and put them upon Eliezer his son, and Aaron shall be gathered unto his people, and shall die there. And Moses did as the Lord commanded, and they went up into Mount Hor in the sight of all the congregation. And Moses stripped Aaron of his garments, and put them upon Eliezer his son, and Aaron died there in the top of the mount. And Moses and Eliezer came down from the mount. And when all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead, they, mo they mourned for Aaron thirty days, even all the house of Israel. And then turn over to Second Timothy chapter 4, those very, very familiar words of the Apostle Paul. In verses 6 to 8, verses that we want to consider tonight, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, 
and not only to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. We'll end our reading at verse 9, knowing the Lord will bless the reading of his word again to all of our hearts. Good to see you all in God's house this evening. And we do welcome you in the Savior's precious name. Just a few announcements, and they're very short this evening, uh, over the summertime, so please just uh, bear with us. No prayer meeting on Tuesday night because of the holiday week, so please just take note uh, of that, please. But the services as normal next Lord's Day, 11.30 in the morning and 6.30 p.m. at night. And again, those meetings are preceded by the half hour of prayer. And next Lord's Day, our brother, Mr. Johnny Jordan, will be here to preach at both services. And our sister, Melanie Ray, will be here next Sunday night to sing at the gospel service. Remember also the drive-in services the last two Sunday nights of July and the first two Sunday nights of August. Please pray for these drive-in services that the Lord will bring visitors in and pray that the Lord will bless this effort again this year in the gospel. Remember the Holiday Bible Club as well, the 5th to the 9th of August. Please continue to pray for that. Uh, Very important. And if you can help, do keep those dates free in your diary. We need as much help uh, as possible. Now that's all the announcements. We're going to sing another hymn, and the offering for God's work is going to be taken up. 594, when my life's work is ended, and I cross the swelling tide, when the bright and glorious morning I shall see, I shall know my Redeemer when I reach the other side, and his smile will be the first to welcome me. We keep our seats as the offering for the Lord's work is taken up.
Amen. That's good singing. We'll ask Joanna to come up and bring us her final message and so. like to thank Joanna for coming along tonight and singing.
for us. And we do pray that the Lord would bless those lovely hymns to all of our hearts. Let's bow in a wee word of prayer and ask the Lord for his help as we come to consider God's word just now at the close of the meeting. Our Father in heaven, we thank thee and we praise thee for our blessed Savior tonight. We thank thee for the Lord Jesus, the one who left heaven's glory, came down into this world in order to go to a cross and there upon Calvary die the just for the unjust. We thank thee that he not only died, but he rose again and he ever lives to make intercession for his people. O God, come tonight, we pray thee, and speak to hearts. Bless your own saints. We thank thee, Lord, (coughs) for the blessed hope of the child of God. We know, Lord, that we're heaven bound because of what the Lord Jesus has accomplished for us upon the cross. And, O God, we thank Thee tonight that we'll never be in a lost eternity because of Thy mercy to us. Though we pray for others tonight who are still unsaved in this meeting, listening on perhaps, still strangers to grace and to God, we pray, Lord, that even this night You would speak to their hearts and save them And, O God, we'll be very careful to give to Thee all the praise, the glory, and every bit of the honor. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Please turn again to 2 Timothy chapter 4. Let's read these wonderful and tremendous words again. Verse 6 to 8. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Very simply tonight at the end of our gospel service, I want to draw your attention to this tremendous statement that Paul made at the end of his life. I say at the end of his life because at this time, Paul was in a prison cell awaiting execution. Just think of these words in that context for a moment. Here we have a man who knows that very soon he's going to die. He's going to face the last enemy. He's going to be executed for his faith. And as he thinks about his death, as he thinks about that execution, he makes this tremendous and wonderful statement concerning his death. What confidence Paul had here as he thought about his last moments upon this scene of time. Child of God, these words, first of all, ought to encourage you and I. And I pray as we deliver this simple message tonight that your heart will be encouraged. Today we've been looking at some of the positive statements of the Apostle Paul in relation to his salvation. But here we have a tremendous statement concerning his death. Paul here knew exactly where he was going to be five minutes after he would die upon this scene of time. And it's not encouraging, dear child of God, for you and I, when we think of the day we will die. Thank God, death is not the end for the child of God. Indeed, death is only the beginning. But these words are not only an encouragement to God's people, but they ought to be a challenge to you tonight if you're found in this gospel service or listening on to this service and you're not saved because you too must die and face the last enemy. I wonder if death was to come your way tonight, how would you face death? The truth is you'd be lost forever and forever and forever. Therefore, I pray that God will take his word this evening and that the Lord would speak to your heart very personally and powerfully and that even before the end of this meeting, you will give your life to Christ and that you will call upon him for salvation. And thank God if you do, then you too can have this confidence and assurance before you die that heaven is your home. What do we learn here? Well, first of all, I want to emphasize that Paul was prepared for death. That's the first thing, very simply, that I want to draw your attention to. This whole text in 2 Timothy 4, verses 6 to 8, express the words of a man who was well prepared for death. What confidence and assurance Paul had as he came to face 
the last enemy. And of course, the simple reason why Paul had this confidence and assurance was because he was saved by the grace of God. He could look back to a day in his life when he was converted to Christ. And of course, that happened on the Damascus Road that day, many years before Paul spoke these words, when he met the resurrected Christ, and when the Lord in mercy reached down and plucked Paul as a brand from the burning. Then Saul of Tarsus, heading towards Damascus to arrest the Christians, to bring them back to Jerusalem. He was a persecutor of God's people, as we know. But on that day, on the Damascus Road, he came face to face with the Lord Jesus and was gloriously saved and converted for time and for eternity. That was the day when he became a new creature in Christ Jesus. That was the day when Paul became a child of God and an inheritor of the kingdom of God. That was the day when Paul's sins were forgiven and when he was delivered from hell and judgment to come. And all this was possible, made possible, because of the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just keep your hand in 2 Timothy chapter 4 there and turn over just for a moment to Acts, the book of Acts in the chapter 22, and listen to Paul's own testimony as he gave his testimony many years after he was saved on the Damascus Road. Verse 6 of Acts chapter 22, And it came to pass that as I made my journey, this was Paul speaking, and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me, and I fell unto the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thy Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise, and go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. There we can pinpoint the day, the moment, the second, when this man prepared for death. He met the resurrected Christ, and he was gloriously saved for time and for eternity. And child of God, that's our testimony tonight. Those of us who are saved, thank God we too can look back to that day, that Damascus Road experience, for that's what it was the day you and I were converted to Christ. We turned from darkness to light. We turned from our sins and sought the Lord. And that day we were born again of the Spirit of God. And because of our conversion, because of our salvation, tonight we're prepared for death. My friend, let me ask you the question. Are you prepared for death? If death was to come your way this evening, are you ready? Are you sure where you're going? Are you sure where you'll be five minutes after you die? I pray if you're not that even tonight in this gospel service, that you will come and make your peace with God because the Bible tells us very clearly that except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You need to prepare for death because it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. You need to make that necessary preparation. And that necessary preparation can only be made by coming and accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your own and personal Savior. But turn back again to 2 Timothy chapter 4. I want you to notice, secondly, very simply, that Paul was willing to die. Not only was he prepared to die, he was prepared for death, but he was willing to die. You know, these words in 2 Timothy 4, verses 6 to 8, express the words of a man who knew that he had come to the end of his life and was willing to let go of his life upon this earth. Look at verse 7. Read it carefully. What does he say? He says this, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Paul finishes something here. What is it? It is his race upon this earth. Paul knew that his course, 
on earth was finished. Therefore, Paul did not try to fight off death. He was not sorry when death came. Paul willingly faced death because he knew his race was run. He knew his work for God was over upon this earth, and he knew it was now God's will for him to die. Paul had no regrets because he had served the Lord from the day he was saved up until this day with all his heart, soul, and mind. Paul here is a man who is not only at peace with God, but he is at peace with himself. Look what he says in verse 6 here. He said this, For I am now ready to be offered. When he speaks there about being offered, he's speaking there about his death, but he's speaking there about being martyred for the faith. But you can see here the peace that Paul had when he came face to face with the executioner. In the original language, these words literally mean this, I am already poured out. I am already poured out. In other words, Paul had accepted God's will for how he would end his life upon this earth. Paul here was in Rome, as we have already emphasized, awaiting execution for his faith. Therefore, not only was Paul willing to die, but he was willing to die as a martyr for the faith because that was God's will for the Apostle Paul. Paul here speaks of death as a pleasure, something to look forward to. He calls it his departure. The time, look at the verse again, the time of my departure is at hand. You know, I've seen many people die, but I've seen few who were willing to die like the Apostle Paul. Child of God, I wonder when we come to die, if God gives us a deathbed. Now, I know the truth is that we could be taken from this scene of time very suddenly. We may not have much time to think about the day of our death because it could come so suddenly. But I wonder if we were lying on a deathbed, would we accept death the way that the Apostle Paul here is accepting death? Men and women, the best way to die, of course, is to die without regrets. And the only way to die without regrets is to live your life serving the Lord and obeying His Word. And of course, the Apostle Paul, we're not saying that he was perfect by any means, but as he looked over his life from the day he was converted on the Damascus Road until this day when he spoke these words, he was a man who had served the Lord and obeyed the Lord throughout his life. And when he come now to die, he had no regrets. Paul lived his life for Christ. Paul said on one occasion, for me to live as Christ. And Paul's object, of course, in life was to come to the end of his life with no regrets. In Acts chapter 20, verse 24, tremendous words that Paul spoke. Listen to them. He said, Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus. And Paul's objective was fulfilled. He finished his course with joy. He finished his ministry with joy. Was it any wonder that he was willing to die and that he was willing to let go when his death eventually did come. O child of God, when it comes to our turn to die, may we be willing to let go of this old world, and may we be willing to go home to glory at the will of God. You know, I read that portion of Scripture, and I want you to turn back to it in the book of Numbers chapter 20. It's a interesting portion of scripture tremendous portion of scripture indeed but in this portion of scripture in numbers chapter 20 we have the death of Aaron the high priest and it's interesting to note here that Aaron like the apostle Paul was willing to die because it was God's appointed time for him to die and the interesting fact is this and it's so important that you understand this Before Aaron walked up that mountain, he knew he was walking up that mountain never to walk down it again because he knew that he was going to die. How do I know that? I know that because of what is said in verse 23. Look at verse 23. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, 
in Mount Hor. He not only spoke to Moses. What he's going to say, he's not only saying to Moses, he's also saying to Aaron. And look what he says, the message that he delivers to Moses and to Aaron. Aaron, verse 24, shall be gathered unto his people, for he shall not enter into the land which I have given unto the children of Israel, because he rebelled against my word at the water of Marabah. And of course, because of that, Moses would not enter into the promised land either. And then the Lord goes on to give the detail of how Aaron would die. Look at verse 25. Take Aaron and Eliezer his son, and bring them up unto Mount Tor, and strip Aaron of his garments, and put them upon Eliezer his son, and Aaron shall be gathered unto his people, and shall die there. So here we have the message of God to Moses and Aaron concerning the death of Aaron. The Lord is telling them the time has come for Aaron to die. And take a look at verse 27. And Moses did as the Lord commanded, and they went up into the mount in the sight of all the congregation. And Moses stripped Aaron. He's making no resistance here. Moses stripped Aaron of his garments and put them in Eliezer his son. And Aaron died there in the top of the mount. And Moses and Eliezer came down from the mount. And when all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead, they mourned for Aaron thirty days, even all the house of Israel. Child of God, when our time comes to die, let's die well. It's good to live well. We must live well. It's good to serve the Lord with all our hearts, and I pray that each and every one of us will do that until the day that we die. But when we come to face the last enemy, let us leave our lives completely in the hands of the Lord For the Lord knows the end from the beginning. He has planned our birth. He has planned our lives. And he has planned our death. And thank God, as we all know, precious in the sight of the Lord are the death of his saints. And praise God the day when Aaron died, as we're going to notice he went home to be with the Lord. Just like Paul. When Paul came to die, he went home to be with the Lord. Let me ask you a question tonight. How will you die? Aaron and Paul died in faith in Christ. They were both the children of God, both saved and redeemed. How will you die? My friend, if you're in this meeting tonight and you're not saved, you're going to die like the rich man in Luke chapter 16. The Bible says that he died and was buried, and in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments. What an awful way to die. Paul died prepared. Aaron died prepared. How will you die? Will you die prepared? Will you die ready for heaven and for home? Or when it comes to your death, will it be absent from the body and present in a lost eternity? That's why I would exhort you tonight to come and put your faith and trust in the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God this evening. You can be saved and you can have the assurance that you're going to heaven and home. And you can know that your sins are forgiven and that you're ready to die. Paul was prepared to die and he was willing to die in God's plan. Notice thirdly and lastly and very briefly, turn back again to 2 Timothy chapter 4. Notice that Paul was looking forward to die. Look what it says in verse 8. Or we'll read verse 6 and through to verse 8 again. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Now look here at his looking forward to die. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me At that day, you know, these words express the words of a man who knew where he was going to spend eternity. That's what verse 8, I believe, is teaching us very simply and very clearly. Paul knew that he was going to heaven to be with Christ for all eternity. Paul knew exactly the moment he would close his eyes in death that he would open them in the presence of 
God, the presence of the Lord. Oh, child of God has an eternal home in heaven. Does it not thrill you? Does it not excite you? I pray that it will, because thank God you and I who are saved and ready to die, what a prospect you and I have. We have the prospect of going home to heaven. We're going home to glory soon to see the city bright, to walk the golden streets of heaven and bask in God's own light. The child of God has an eternal home in heaven. That's a fact. And something that every day we should thank the Lord for, and it's something every day that we should look forward to. Are you looking forward to going home to heaven? Oh, praise God, what a glorious day that's going to be when we leave this old sinful world behind us and when we go home to see our Savior and to speak to Him. What a day that's going to be when we see the nail prints in His hands and His feet, when we look into the face of our lovely Redeemer. A lovely portion of Scripture over in Matthew's Gospel in chapter 5. Let me just read you the words. Here we have the words of the Son of God Himself. In Matthew chapter 5, and it's verses 11 and, and 12 of that chapter. And the Lord Jesus said this, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice! And be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Great is your reward in heaven. And the Lord Jesus walked upon this scene of time. He preached and spoke about heaven time and time again. And of course, he declared that heaven was a real place, prepared for those who were ready to go there, saved by His grace. But thank God He emphasized the fact that heaven was a place of rejoicing. What a day that will be when we leave this world with all its sin behind us and we go home to be with Christ, which is far, far better. Child of God, look at what the Apostle Paul said at the end of verse 8. Here he declares in this verse that he's going home to heaven to receive a crown of righteousness. But look what he says at the end of the verse. Shall give me in that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Oh, thank God there's a mansion in heaven for each and every one who are trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ as their own and personal Redeemer. My friend, let me, at the close of the meeting tonight, challenge your heart. If you're found in this service and you're still not saved, are you sure of heaven? Are you sure that when you take your last breath upon this scene of time, that it's heaven? If you're not sure, then I would exhort you, make sure tonight. Come to Christ and turn from your sin and trust the Lord Jesus alone as your own and personal Redeemer. Because that's the reason why the Savior came into this world. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. I pray that everyone in this meeting, everyone listening on to this gospel service tonight, will be looking forward to die, to go to heaven, to be with the Lord for all eternity. Do you have this assurance? Do you have this confidence? Do you know 100% that if you were to take your last breath just now, that you'd be with the Lord in heaven? My friend, this blessed hope is only for those who are redeemed by the precious blood of Christ and saved by His grace. If you're not saved tonight, Come and put your trust in Him. Only trust Him, only trust Him. Only trust Him now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you now. And thank God He will save you now because He has promised 
that all who call upon him by faith and in repentance will receive everlasting life. I pray that God will bless his word to all of our hearts this evening. We're going to sing a closing hymn. We're going to sing that lovely hymn, 221 in the hymn book. And it's an invitation hymn, Come every soul by sin oppressed. There's mercy with the Lord, and he will surely give you rest by trusting in his word. Only trust him, only trust him. Only trust him now. He will save you, he will save you. He will save you now. We're going to stand to sing. If you're not saved in the meeting, you listen to these words very, very carefully and make them the prayer of your heart that you will come and trust Christ as your Redeemer. Let's all stand to sing. Let us all unite our hearts together in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank Thee and we praise Thee for the wonderful truths that Thy Word has revealed to us this day again. We thank Thee, Lord, for a home in heaven. We thank Thee that those of us who are saved will never know what it is to be in a lost eternity. We thank Thee that our sins, which were many, are forgiven all because of the cross work of Jesus Christ. O oh God, we pray that you'll help us, those of us who are saved, live or, help us to live our lives for thee, Lord. Help us to serve thee and, and walk with thee. And O oh God, then we come to the end of our lives. 
Lord, we'll have no regrets. We thank Thee for these tremendous words of the Apostle Paul. And we pray, Lord, that You would burn them within our hearts. We thank Thee, Lord, that they contain, Lord, words of the blessed hope of the child of God. Lord, for those in the meeting, those listening on who are still strangers to grace and to God, we pray, Lord, that you would speak to them, that even tonight, Lord, that they will have this assurance, that they will know of a surety that they're bound for heaven and home, that they'll be saved. O oh God, we pray that you would speak to their hearts and draw them to Christ. Bless us now, we pray thee. Separate us in thy love. Keep your hand upon us, Lord, till we meet again in thy will. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen.